Let us pray for inspiration. Spirit, Spirit, most holy, profound Spirit, source of life and wisdom, you are at the core of our being, giving us life, helping us to see with the eyes of our hearts. Wisdom, thank you for your wisdom. Open us today, open our hearts, open our minds to the message that you have for us today. Amen. So remember what flight attendants tell you about your oxygen in case of a drop in cabin pressure, right? You've all heard this if we've, if we've flown. Make sure that you put on your oxygen mask first before you try to help somebody else which makes perfect sense because we can only ha have to have oxygen within us if we're gonna help somebody else breathe. We have to be alive ourselves <laughs> before we help somebody else to live. Makes perfect sense. And it reminds me of what Jesus teaches about spiritual life. So in today's message from the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth. You season the earth, you season the world with goodness. You are the light of the world. You bring hope to the darkness in this world. He says that. But Jesus teaches that in order to bring goodness and bring hope to the world, in order to bring salt and light to the world, we have to find them within ourselves first. And he teaches that just before today's passage, just before today's passage about the salt and the light. In his Sermon on the Mount, we talked about that last week, in his wonderful Beatitudes, those eight statements, eight statements that more or less say what must change within you if you want to bring change to the world? What must go on within you if you want to have it go on in the world? These eight statements are about profound transformation, being transformed from the inside out by genuine healthy humility, compassion, peace, generosity, forgiveness, mercy, all of these things that he names in the Beatitudes. We have to be transformed if we want to help the world be transformed. We've got to find that light and salt within us to bring to the world. A few years ago, I attended the gathering, annual gathering of the Northern California Nevada Conference of the United Church of Christ. That's really a mouthful to say. And a social justice activist spoke to us. And he said, if you want to transform the world with peace and justice, you have to be transformed first by that peace and justice. <coughs> because if you're not filled with compassion, transformed by compassion from the inside out, then you are liable to get self-righteous about your peace and justice, and no one will see the light of peace and justice. If you aren't transformed by humility from the inside out, then you, you're liable to burn out with ambition and workaholism. And what good will that do for peace and justice? Makes perfect sense. Same thing that Jesus is saying. He's, this social justice activist is basically saying, get your oxygen mask mask on first so you can help other people with their oxygen masks. And he ended his talk by saying, only transformed people can help transform the world. That's how it works. Everyone here probably who grew up in a church, whatever that kind of church was, you've heard a lot of messages about the kinds of things we need to do to be salt and light for the earth and the world things that we need to do. If you grew up in a very conservative church, 
you probably heard that you need to make sure that you believe the right things and then help other people believe the right things so they will be saved, they'll have salvation. That's what you need to do, and then you'll be the salt and the light to the world. If you grew up in a more progressive church, you probably heard, well, you need to serve in the world and you need to work for peace and justice in the world. That's what it means to be salt and light for the world. But what we really needed to hear most of all was Jesus' message in the Beatitudes. Be transformed. Happy are you. Blessed are you when you are transformed by compassion and humility and mercy and forgiveness, peace. Blessed are you when you know who you are, when you know the salt and the light within you. And then you can bring that to the world, the salt and light. That's what we need to know. What we see in Jesus, the very life in Jesus, the transformed life we see in Jesus, we want within ourselves, and we want to bring that kind of life to the world. Now, of course, we are called to act in the world. We're called to do things. We're called to help God's dream for the world come true. But we can't put the cart before the horse. We're first called to help God's dream for us come true. So we bring that gift to the world. We are called to let God transform us from the inside out. Be new people, new hearts. Christianity is full of metaphors like that. New life, new birth. Conversion, repentance, it's, it's embracing this transformation from within. So how do we do it? How do we get transformed from the inside out? Well, I think we have to practice every day. We have to practice paying attention. Paying attention in ourselves to all the things that Jesus identifies in that Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes. We have to pay attention to our judgments we have to pay attention to our reactivity. We have to pay attention to our desire to control. Pay attention with compassion, not with harshness, maybe even with humor, and practice letting those things go. Practice opening ourselves to these other gifts. And I think we have to practice everyday praying, praying for the very spiritual gifts that we need, praying for trans. Transformation. Jesus says, ask and you will receive. Knock and the door will be open to you. And I think he's always talking about spiritual gifts. If you want transformation and you want it and you seek it, you will find it. God will bring transformation. So pray every day, night and day. That's what we sang in Oh Happy Day. <laughs> night and day. Pray. And avail yourselves of other kinds of spiritual practices that God uses to transform us, to change our consciousness, change the way we see the world, to see with the eyes of the heart as Jesus sees, changing our consciousness. Meditation is a great way to see in a different way, to let go of the usual default ways that we approach the world with our thinking and desires for control and judgment. <coughs> There are all kinds of forms of meditation. Find one. Try it five minutes a day. See what silence does. It's scary to us sometimes, silence. But be faithful to some practice like that of silence for five minutes a day. Maybe you can increase it. You could take meditation classes if you want to do that, get help. Uh, but don't give up too early. When people meditate, they think everyone else must have it down. I must be doing something wrong because my mind keeps going. But that's not true. Everybody's mind keeps going. Try it. Try other spiritual practices. Journaling can be a helpful practice. Walking the labyrinth can be a helpful spiritual practice. Using music, using nature, there are all kinds of spiritual practices that, that allow God to open us up, transform how we see the world, how we see others, how we see people we don't like how we see people that we love but want to change. All sorts of, of ways, direct ways, practices that help us be transformed from the inside out. 
and paradoxically, one thing that helps God change us in here is what we do out there. And I, I really found that out. It came home to me really strongly back in my early 20s when I was teaching religion at an all-girls Catholic high school. And the textbook had a story about a, a teenager, a student who hated to go to the nursing home to visit her grandmother. She hated it. She hated everything about the nursing homes. She hated the way they smelled, the way they looked, everything about, and she didn't particularly like her grandmother either. <laughs> so she had no great motivation to go visit her grandmother at the nursing home, but she thought she would try it. She thought she would try it, and she did. And her faithfulness, faithfully visiting, listening, comforting, learning from her grandmother actually changed her heart. So what she was doing out there did change in here, but it only happened because she had the desire to change, the longing to change. She wanted her heart changed. She began with that kind of intention. Otherwise, you can go through rote motions out of obligation. And it doesn't seem as though that changes us very easily. So, you don't have to wait until you have salt and light perfectly formed within you <laughs> before you start to act in the world. We'll never be perfect. No one of us will ever be perfect. We'll never have that perfect salt and light in the world. But remember, in his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is speaking not just to individuals. He is speaking to a community of his followers. And he's inviting them to help each other, help each other be salt and light, help each other in this journey, love one another, help each other. And so I think that is our best hope, to know that we are on a journey together, not just as individuals. We're on a journey together, helping each other, making sure we each have our oxygen masks on. And sometimes I'm helping you, and sometimes you're helping me. Sometimes you're breathing more strongly and clearly, and, I'm, and I need some oxygen. Yeah. We're there for each other. And so that we can be transformed, we can truly live ourselves, and so we can, as a community of faith and as individuals, help our world to be transformed bring salt and light to the world. Amen.